Cane Garden Bay on the west side of Tortola is the original tourist hotspot on the island. There are several hotels and bars that dot the beach. Although Cane Garden Bay is only a short 15 minute drive from Rowtown, it is definitely not for the faint of heart. The hills are steep. See that mountain? I came down that. And the drivers are wild. So driver beware. But once you arrive here safely, it is definitely worth the trip. And you'll have to check out the Colwood's Rum Distillery while you're here. Just down the road from the beach at Cane Garden Bay is the 400-year-old Colwood's Rum Distillery. So this here called a sugar cane, what we use to make the rum. So this is actually sugar cane right here? Yeah. So what we do, we cut the sugar cane at least this height. Right. And we go straight back down to the bottom part to squeeze to get the juice out from it. So by doing that, the juice is actually very sweet, so it's going to suck the sugar cane juice. Now how do you actually take the juice out, extract the juice? Well, we have like a squeezer. So like we, um, we have a squeezer um, operate like a diesel engine. Mm -hmm. So that um, squeezes the sugar cane to get the juice out from it. Well, the head part, what we do with the head part, we make the leaves shorter and we plant it back into the earth. So by doing that, we shoot off a new head. And how long would it take to grow this tall? Well, this will take at, at least only a year. Only a year to, to get that height. Yeah. And how much, how much juice can you get from that sugar cane? Uh, well, not so much. <laughs> not enough for a drink? Enough for a drink. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so um, up the hill, we, we have to like go up the hill, so we're going to see the squeezer what we use to squeeze the sugar cane. Okay, show me the squeezer. This thing will be spilling very fast. And then we'd feed the sugar cane in like that way, and it would squeeze it. And the juice fall below, runs straight inside the sink. So it falls into the trough right here, into here, into this container. Now where would all the actual sugar cane and the extra stuff go? It just falls yeah, back here? To the back. We also use the sugar cane skin for the fire, so we doesn't really waste it. We have to put it into the sun to dry to boil the cane juice into this building. Okay, now how would the juice get from here into the building? Well, we have to add on some pipes to go straight into this building here. So usually there'd be a long pipe right into the building and then it goes to be boiled. Yeah, so we have to go back down to the side of the building so I can show you which part we put the cane skin into. Okay. Yeah, well, this here is the hole where we put the cane skin into. We put, um, after the jam, the cane skin is actually drying. We bring it all here to light a fire to boil the cane juice into this building. We have like four pots inside here. So these are like how the pot look like. This is like an old hole inside here. Okay. So we boil the cane juice here for three hours. That's to burn all the water from it. Normally all rum make from molasses, but we doesn't burn it down to molasses. We rum here is natural. That's cane juice water, no chemical inside of it. And how long does it take to cool? Well, we have to put like um, yeast and some water into it to make it ferment and it only takes us a week for that for it to get cold. It's only one week? Yeah. So when it gets cold, we pump it to the front of the building to boil to get alcohol. So we have to go to the front. So am I getting closer to the real stuff? Yeah. All right. So this is the still here? Yeah. How does it work? Well, what we do, we um, after um, fermenting the cane juice, we distill this here, it's all the make from um, the cups, the pots that I make out of copper, so it gets hot very fast. So um, right now we're using the one to the back because it gets hot very fast, because this one here takes so long to get hot. So um, we actually boil in the cane juice there, mm -hmm. so we have the head for the pot like into the building. So by boiling the cane juice, the alcohol vapor up. Evaporate? Yeah, it goes through some water, we have like a system there with some water, mm -hmm. so the pipe goes through that and back into the building. So uh, when it's reaching the building, well, we have to go in the building so I can show you which part we collect the alcohol. So we're almost there? Yeah, we're almost there. Okay. So now this is the last step. Oh yeah. Well, what I have to do here, I have to show you which part we collect the alcohol. So we have a pipe goes out to the wall and we collect the alcohol inside this bucket here. So the alcohol come down this color white. It comes down 150 proof. Now is that legal, 150? Not, really. not even close? No. Not even close. <laughs> so what we do, all three rums is 80 proof by adding water into it. So the white stays in this bottle here mm -hmm. called a demijohn. So it stays white, keep it strength. This is going to be sound like a white light and it will knock you out very fast. This here is a dark rum. For us to get this color, we have to take the white and age it into the barrel here. Four years to get a color dark. The people who make the barrel make out the oak wood and they burn the inside. Okay, now what's the proof on that? This is also 80 proof, but what, what um, by oh, aging it here, proof. by aging it here for four years, it gets smooth. And this a one smooth here, 80 yeah. proof. 
very smooth. This here is a spice one from like Captain Morgan rum. It's very spicy, it's very good also. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for touring me. I know everything about alcohol now. <laughs> now, is Cane Garden Bay named after the cane juice for well, rum? Actually, yes, because the full place here was only sugar cane uh, way back in the day. The sugar cane may have been what made the town famous, but it's the boaters that keep it that way. Other than Colwood's rum distillery, there really aren't any other attractions on Cane Garden Bay. Except, of course, if you enjoy sitting on the beach and enjoying the nightlife and bars. It's actually the oldest and most developed holiday destination on the island. And as you can see behind me, it's very popular with this chartering crowd. Well, speaking of chartering, there's Jimmy. He's going to take me back to the base.